It has been about a month since I've sewn anything for myself. I've been in a bit of a creative slump and today I just feel like sitting down at my sewing machine and just forcing myself to get out of it. Sometimes that's what I have to do. If I'm feeling uninspired, I just have to sit down and sew something. Even if I don't like what I sew, it just helps me get back into the groove. And the weather's been warming up a little bit lately, so I'm starting to get a little bit inspired for spring and summer clothes, but just a little bit. <laughs> I'm still very much tapped out of ideas, but I think if I just sit down and force myself to do something, I can make something cute and get back my motivation. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at my Pinterest and see what I've been saving lately. I haven't been updating my Pinterest board for garment inspo in a while, but let's see if anything I saved a while ago will kind of spark some sort of inspiration. I'm going to make a dress, I think, because that's basically all I wear all spring and summer are dresses because it's just so easy. It's like a full outfit already done for you. I really want some more like midi length, like kind of mid calf, like bias cut dresses or like tiered dresses, just things that are like really easy to put on and they look amazing without having any effort put in. Yeah, so I think if I can at least make one dress, I'll kind of talk through what I'm doing as I'm making it. So hopefully you can pick up some tips here and there. And if not, then you can just watch this if you're also feeling unmotivated and Maybe you can put this on while you sew so that you just sit down like me and just sew something, just sew anything. Next step is we need to look at the fabric because even though I have been really uninspired, I've still been buying fabric as I see it because every time I'm like, I hope this will inspire me to make something when I get home and it hasn't yet, but I've been collecting some really, really cute things for spring. So let's take a look at what we have. Okay, I have a few fabrics and uh, like thrift flip things that I don't exactly have any ideas for yet. So I might do something out of those. First, this is green. I love this. And then also along with the chiffon, I have this like kind of watercolory floral. Um, both of these are really cute. These could be like that sort of statement top vibe. Um, and then in terms of dresses, I might have to make something with this. It's always like this time of year, at least where I live, everything is so brown outside. So looking at a color like this, I'm like, I would feel really stupid wearing this right now. But in the summer, these bright colors, it's like all I want to wear. So I might make something out of this. It could be like a good like night dinner dress I don't know and then the other thing I have is this orange I completely forgot I got this I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with this yet but well actually no it'll probably be a dress but I think this is more like mini dress vibe and then I have this top that I think is really cute because I really like the sleeves and so then I wanted to kind of do a thrift flip on this and make it a little bit more my style so this maybe this and maybe this if i have time well i have all the time but if i have motivation now we look at patterns see if i have anything that will inspire me in that direction i'm trying to decide for the pink dress if i want to do that like if i want it kind of a little bit of a cowl neck or if I want to sew the bodice on separately and kind of have the bust be like gathered. Hmm. I think maybe cowl neck, cause then I can just kind of use my measurements and trace that. Okay, I guess I can do a bias cut cowl neck dress without a pattern basically. So maybe I'll show you guys that. I'm gonna put some inspo up here so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And if you wanna follow along and make something similar to this, I don't think this is gonna be like an in-depth tutorial, but it's pretty easy. So you're gonna need your bust measurement, your waist measurement, and your hip measurement. And I guess if you wanna be exact about 
where you want the dress to come on you. Measure from your top bust down to whatever point you want the dress to end on you, and then add in your seam allowance. So for the top, we're gonna be doing a uh, lined bodice, and then for the bottom, you can just do whatever type of hem you want. I'm just gonna probably double it over. Um, you can do whatever you want, but just make sure that you add enough room for the lining and the hem onto that measurement. But that doesn't matter too, too much unless you wanna be really precise or if you wanna make this dress shorter, then that may matter a little bit more. But I'm gonna to try to go for like below my knee. So I'm not gonna be like very particular about it. So what I'm gonna do is also measure the distance from the top of my bust to where my truest sort of waist measurement is. So that's gonna be the smallest point of your waist. So I'm gonna start cutting my fabric and I'm gonna cut it on the bias, which just a quick bias lesson. Basically, when you turn the fabric on a 45 degree angle, you're now kind of cutting where the fibers are diagonal. I'm not such an expert. I know there's a lot that goes into cutting on the bias to make sure that like your garment doesn't warp over time and all that kind of stuff. I honestly don't really care that much. I'm not selling these things. I'm just making them for myself. So I literally just turn the fabric on a 45 degree angle and then I cut into it. Basically what that does is it allows the fabric to have a little bit more give. That means that I can use something like this that's like a crepe sort of material and I can actually make it really precisely form fitting without the fabric actually having any stretch and without having to put in a zipper closure, hopefully, because I really don't like doing zippers. So I am gonna give myself a little bit of room on each side plus my seam allowance, but um, I don't know if you can see here, like if I turn it on a diagonal like this, so the corner's up there, you can see that kind of has a little bit of give as opposed to this does not. I don't know if that makes sense. This isn't a full bias cutting tutorial. So definitely if you want to learn more about it, there's probably tons of really in-depth videos out there on YouTube that you can watch. But basically that's how I'm cutting this. Whoa. If your fabric has a little bit of stretch to it anyways, then just cut it how you normally would. Or if you want to put a zipper in it, then also just cut it however you want to. Um, I'm doing this on the bias because I think it is so flattering. I really like the way that things fit me when they're caught on the bias. I do actually have quite a bit of this fabric. That's the other thing is that it's not the most, um, it's not the most cost effective way to cut fabric because you do end up um, having quite a bit on each side that you cut because you have to turn the fabric if that makes sense you'll see when I cut it so if you're trying to save fabric or you only have so much fabric to work with bias cutting is not necessarily going to be a great option for you but I have probably about three meters of this so I think we'll be fine so if you look at the cutting mat here obviously you have the standard grid this will probably help you understand the angles a little bit better so you have these lines that are going at your 90 degrees and then the cutting mat has these diagonal lines as well so if you look in the corner here it's going to tell you what the distance between all of these are so it's really simple if you need a guide when you're cutting on the bias as long as you kind of use the grid um, as a guide and make sure your fabric kind of lays straight it's going to be totally fine I didn't really measure super precisely. That's the other thing when you're cutting on the bias, the fabric just kind of slides around everywhere and it can get a little bit annoying. And that's another reason why I'm not the best person to teach you about bias cutting. And I don't really know what I'm doing. I just like the way it looks when I'm done. So I do it and I don't know if I do it right. <laughs> I cut two pieces of the actual like main part of the dress. So I basically took my bust measurement and my waist measurement, and I divided them in half because I'm just doing one side at once. The top part is my bust measurement cut in half, 
and then I added about an inch and a half seam allowance on either side just to be really really sure I had enough to work with because I don't want it to be too form-fitting especially at the top because I want it to kind of cowl like this a little bit so at least that part will have a nice amount of drape I know I gave myself a nice enough fabric for that um, and then the rest of the dress I can easily take in if I need to so then running from our bust measurement I measured from my upper bust to my waist and then I just kind of tapered that off you can kind of just gradually ease that to the waist measurement however it works for your body and then I did the same thing with the hip measurement and I just cut this until I ran out of enough fabric to have it be one piece and then what I did is I cut a lining for the bodice so I just put my uh, dress piece that I just cut over top of the fabric and then I cut this piece to go about down to where my waist is and then the last thing that I did was cut four two inch strips um, these are gonna be the straps I want them to be ties and then kind of hang down a little bit I made them quite long because I want the top of this to be like quite stringy and I want the ties to be a little bit of a feature but you can do them however you want you also don't have to make them ties so you can just cut two i'm going to start by uh sewing these straps and then turning them inside out because that's the most tedious part of this whole project and i'm going to need them as soon as i put the uh, outer dress and the lining together so i'm going to do that now just to get it out of the way and i'll show you that when i'm done so basically what i did for these straps is i just folded the strip onto itself and then stitch all the way down and then I just trim this with pinking shears you don't really need to do this but I just did this just I don't know just so I can have like a cleaner edge on the inside and then I'm gonna take a safety pin stick it onto the edge and turn this inside out on itself okay so now I have all of our little noodles that are gonna be our straps I'm gonna iron these down just so that they lay really flat i don't like how like tubular these look so um ironing them will just make them look a lot more clean but first what i'm gonna do is take our two outer pieces of the dress and i'm just gonna sew those together along the sides this is when the bias cutting truth really comes out and you get to see if you cut the fabric right if these line up together i might use pins for this just to make it a little bit easier but i also might not because i'm feeling kind of lazy today i think it should be okay and then i'm gonna try this on once i put these together just to see like how far off i was with my measurements again i'm really just still getting the hang of cutting on the bias so sometimes it ends up being so wrong and sometimes it's absolutely perfect one thing that you should keep in mind when you are cutting on the bias is to keep trying things on as you're making it because I find a lot of times garments on the bias look a lot smaller than they actually are um, just because the weight of the fabric kind of pulls it down and since it's cut on a diagonal it means that the fabric goes from being out here and then it gets weighed down and it kind of sinks in and narrows so it might not look like it will fit you but just keep trying it on so that you can get a really good feel for how the fit actually works on the bias so I just tried this on and the fit is amazing this just goes to show you how amazing cutting on the bias really is because I used an inch seam allowance so I probably had about maybe a half inch give on either side give or take and it fits perfectly so you go from having a fabric that has no stretch at all when you're on that 90 degree angle and then you simply just turn it and you have a completely new piece of fabric it's so amazing and the most flattering thing i think ever on everyone so i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my lining pieces i'm just going to sew them together using the exact same seam allowance and then we're going to iron the straps and pop those in between the lining and the outside
So I have everything ironed now and now basically what I'm gonna do is attach the bodice lining the way you would any lining. So putting it right sides together. So this is the outside of the dress. Then we're going to take the lining inside out and just slide it over the dress. So we have all of those pieces lined up and so it should look like this. So this is the outside layer of the dress and then the lining comes down there and this is the inside of the lining that's showing. So basically your seams of the lining should be facing out and your seams of the outer part should be facing in on the inside of the dress. So I'm just gonna sew all the way around here but what I'm gonna do is put these straps in between those pieces, between the lining and the dress. Just stick the strap in there and then you can see it come out the other side. So you can see the strap on the bottom and on the top, just for reference. So you might need to try this on and kind of measure out and mark with pins or something where you want the straps to be, but um, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I'm putting these out um, a little bit farther than I normally would just because I do want the front to have a little bit of that cowl effect So on the front pieces, I'm gonna do them quite far towards the edge and then put the back ones A little bit closer together just so that by the time I tie them all together that can kind of cinch this in a little bit if that makes sense and then Basically, we just have to hem it and we're done So this is the finished product. I really like how this turned out. The only thing I'm gonna have to play around with is the neckline. It's not exactly cowling. I'm gonna have to play around with that a little bit, but that's the benefit of having straps like this that aren't one set length. You can kind of wear it however you want to. The other really amazing thing about bias cutting that I wanna mention is that when you go to cut the bottom of your dress, you don't necessarily have to hem it. So that's really amazing. The fabric won't fray. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with this, especially just because it's my dress. I'm not giving this to someone or selling it. So if it starts to fray a little bit, we can just hem it. But yeah, I really, really love the way it turned out. And I hope you guys liked following along a little bit with this process. Let me know what you thought down below and I'll see you back here next time with more sewing videos.